Yeah, amazing, right? It's just amazing. Welcome, everybody. It's so good to hear all that testimony. The testimony, um, the testimony comes because there's a transformation. And the transformation is not in her kidney or, you know, in Alberto's bell palsy or, you know, it, the transformation is in the heart. God allows for that, you know. Like I was teaching somebody, I don't know who it is, but I talked to so many people. But, you know, God allows for tests. You know, there's, there's waiting in the Word of God. And it, the Word of God is the, the specially set apart anointing that's going to come on you. And if you, if you can't carry that weight yet, God's not going to put that weight on you and then your knees are going to buckle. You can't handle it. God the Father is so beautiful and merciful that He will allow you to go through that process. And when you've gone through that process and you're strong enough to stand, then he'll say, son, okay, now you can do this, you know? It's like, you know, if you, if you give your car keys to your kids, even though they inherit it from you, they may crash your car, right? So God is so good, amen. So yeah, no, I, I had a good vacation. Thank you for praying too, because you never know, right? Every time you go up in the, in the plane, you're 38, 39,000 feet above ground, I mean, I shouldn't say this on camera, but, you know, all those things that they do, you know, when you come in the plane, okay, now, you know, put this oxygen here and this and that. And it's like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. You're 38,000 feet above ground, right? So um, prayer is what works. When you get in the plane, before you get in the plane, pray. Praying in tongues, I appreciate that, uh, brother, for doing that. Because, you know, um, it's something that you need to do. Like a lot of times when you activate your gifts, and I don't know a lot of people, they don't quite understand, but when, when you want to activate your gift, one of the gifting that God gives to you is your dreams. So when you dream, um, you know, actually, you know, like people think it's just dreams, but it's not just dreams. Um, and otherwise, Jesus won't say that God is working all the time, right? So if you want to have dreams that are prophetic, here's one impartation I teach you here, is that you need to speak in tongues before you go to sleep. And then you have prophetic dreams and you will see what's coming next. And so many times, uh, just not to get into detail, but I... I was praying for something that my family has been praying for for the last two years. And, you know, I was praying and I saw in the dream where uh, one of the family member was running. It was like a race, running almost to the end. And then there's this guy that came and just used a baseball bat and whacked him under his feet. And then he fell, right? He stumbled. So I knew that that was, it's, it's a message from God to prepare because he loves us. So he's preparing you for that message. You know, that message was to prepare you. And I knew that that first part of it, that portion of it was not going to happen in that business dealing. I knew that. But sometimes something that you know does not mean that something that you should share with everybody. Because your heart and God's heart has to be about encouraging people, not discouraging people. So by the time I saw the second dream, God gave me a second dream and it was a like celebration. And I was thinking, cool in the gang. I don't know why I'm thinking, celebration, right? And I was like, and then that was what I shared with the family. I see us celebrating in the room. And true enough, it came to pass. Amen? Hallelujah. So, yeah, so uh, today the message uh, is on why two trees in the garden? This came about when I was in Bahamas. I was in the middle of the pool and I said, God, show me this palm tree, what it looks like in Eden. Now, Eden is not, uh, it's not a place, the name of a place. Eden in Hebrew means the presence of God. Okay? So if you read the Bible, read it in the spirit so you will see it. Like, you know, God said, plant the garden of Eden. Not garden Eden. Garden of Eden, Garden of the Presence of God. And then, strangely enough, we're going to go into it today. <clears throat> but he showed me, I said, so what is palm tree, what does it look like? 
and he showed me it and it was glass like <laughs> transparent and i said oh my goodness i felt sad for the tree to be honest the palm tree that's stuck like this that's totally <laughs> wooden and <laughs> you know dependent on the wind to blow no they are like rejoicing worshiping god and it's not like this this is all Adam's fault. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> but this is what happened in the garden. So we're going to get into the garden today and learn more, right? So let's go into the word. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, New King James Version. The Lord God planted a garden. See, he planted a garden. Adam didn't plant nothing, right? He planted a garden, a garden eastward in Eden. Can I tell you something eastward in Eden? You know, the revelation came like north, south, east, west, right? So if you're facing God, right? You know, when John, the apostle, when he was in heaven, he was facing God. Every time you face God, you face the throne, you are seeing that. So eastward is the right side when you're facing him. Are you following me? Where is Jesus seated? In the right hand of the Father. So this guy was supposed to be the guy, the guy, Adam, right? We're going to talk about Adam a little bit. So anyways, so then, and there he put the man. Who put the man? It wasn't like Adam walked into the garden. No, he took the man and he put it into the garden. Right? Put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow. Out of the ground. That is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, oh, pay attention to this. We're talking about two trees now. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden. That means it was in the middle of the garden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Those two trees. Right in the middle. There's meaning for that. So that is from Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. New King James Version. That's the word of the Lord. Now, <clears throat> So we learned that there are two trees in the Garden of Eden. These two trees, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and tree of life, will eventually, will eventually, when they were, they were there, will eventually, we're talking about there now, will eventually determine the course of our lives. These two trees. One may ask, and people often do, like, which family tree are you from? What's your family tree like, you know? People talk about that, right? That's where it came from, family tree. Okay? <laughs> yeah, genealogy, right? So you can look at these two trees in the garden, right? It's likening to a spiritual lineage. That means which tree did you come from? Okay? Earthly or heavenly? Sin or righteousness? Tree of knowledge or tree of life? Which one? Right? So, today I want to reveal what God revealed to me about these two trees. <clears throat> Did you know? Okay, here, here's the thing. You write this all down if you forget. You know, today is a lot of notes you need to write down. After Adam and Eve fell, right? A prophecy was spoken by God. Oh, yeah. That there will be two roots. Let's go, you know, two roots. Here are the two roots. Are you ready? Child of the serpent or child of the woman? Child of the serpent or child of the woman? Let's look at the, the, the word here. Genesis 3, 14, 15, NLT. Genesis 3, 14, 15, NLT. Okay, you got it up there. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, this is after they fell and... Adam blamed the woman and blamed God, said, the woman you made made me eat. Like, oh, blame woman, blame God. And then, and then he said, woman, what did you do? He said, oh, blame the snake, right? So now it's the snakes. So, so this is the part, right? The context of it. So then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in dust, as long as you live. And I will cause, pay attention to this, hostility between you and the woman. Not between you and Adam. Huh? You and the woman. And between your offspring 
and her offspring. There are two offspring here. Okay? He will strike your head. Now, when you talk about head, that means you're leading, right? The head of the department is who? The leader, correct? He will strike your head. He will strike your leading. Okay? And you will strike his heel. What does heel mean? Following. Okay? So if you're following me, continue to pray. <laughs> right? <laughs> because he was, you know, with, you know, yeah. Okay, so anyways, he got that. So, so it's important to understand what went on here. Right? So the entire Bible, let me tell you something. The entire Bible is for the revelation of Jesus. Nothing else. Right? Don't read it for the revelation of yourself. No. Okay? A lot of people try to go to Bible study at a point, you know, try to fit, you know, even preaching, try to fit into the... Con no, here. No. You fit into the Bible. Okay? Because the Bible is the revelation of Jesus. The entire Bible. Every word of it, every paragraph, from the beginning to the end, you will see Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay? There's a reason for that. We're going to get into that. Right? So you will see Jesus in 66 books in the Bible. Doesn't matter which book you turn to. Because without the revelation of Jesus, pay attention, without the revelation, we would have ended up like the child of the serpent. Oh, yes. There's two sides to the tree, remember? The offspring of the serpent and the offspring of the woman. Why the woman? Right? Why the woman? Tell me why. Because at the end of the day, Jesus came from that woman. He didn't come from the man. He came from the woman by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, if you become like the child of the serpent, then you will solely be dependent on earthly visual and no heavenly vision. Now, you may say, no, no, I'm not like that. No, wait. If you're congregating and you're not operating by the Spirit, how are you operating by? By what you want to see. Are you following? So many times in the world, the world is teaching us seeing is believing. Isn't it? That's what people tell you. But Jesus came and said no. <laughs> you know, when I studied psychology, when I was in school, I don't know, I, I did a double degree, okay? Business and psychology, for the fun of it. But I learned so many things that was, you know, I was walking alone because there was no, you know, those, those times you're in school, there was no Bible group or nothing, but you just kept your faith and you keep walking. But every time you're getting pounded in school about there's no God, if you go to philosophy, at the end of the philosophy 101 class, the proof is to prove there is no God. Right? Go to psychology class, at the end of it, it's the same thing. The snake after the fall of man was cursed more than other creatures. The Bible said that, right? And he had to conform to the shape of the earth. Why? He had to go on his belly. He wasn't on his belly before, you know that? All of a sudden, he has to go on his belly, right? And he has to grovel in the dust. You know what groveling means? It means to creep with the face down on the ground. You remember Abraham? God said to Abraham, Abraham, stop looking down. Look up. Look up. Look at the stars. He was groveling. He was looking on earth. You know when the snake has to creep like this, when God said, okay, you have to follow the shape of the earth? That has become what the world is doing. Dependent on the earth, looking to the earth, everything to the earth. Are you following? That's the other root of the serpent. Worldly thinking, worldly, everything that you were talking about earlier. Oh, doctor said that I have this, but they gave me the medicine that's not even for this. Why is that? Doctor said something in my kidney, but when I trusted God, the thing disappeared. Nah. You see? Are you getting where I'm, where I'm going here? Anyways, face to the ground. Face to the ground. That means you conform 
to the world. What did Paul say? Do not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, so, having this thing to, like, you know, the snake having to follow the ground, right, grovel on the ground, is actually a prophetic vision of people conforming to the earth. Depending on the earth. You ever heard of people saying Mother Earth? I grew up hearing that, right? Mother Earth. Do you even know where Mother Earth comes from? You don't, right? You conform, you conform. Oh yeah, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, Mother... Mm, do some study on it. It comes from Greek mythology of Maka, the mother of Gaia. It's a demon you're talking about. Oh yeah. Keep following, right? <laughs> Mother Earth, Mother Nature. Ancient Roman religion called her Terra Matar, Mother Earth. No, we have a Heavenly Father. Not focusing on, on the Earth, focusing on Him. So anyone looking for the worldly ways, conforming to the world, will be operating out of fear of rejection. That's what happened to Adam. The moment he fell, he was fearful of rejection. Always working to be accepted. Working to be... Yeah, remember, after that, God said, you will till the ground by the sweat of your brow. That means you'll be working, 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 working. When before then, you didn't have to. By His grace. You're walking around naked, didn't even know you're naked. Right? Why? You never even needed to work. Trees just grow, fruits just grow. But all of a sudden, when he took of that and said, yeah, I want to know good and evil, okay, you now want to know good and evil, you go ahead and till the ground. Work the ground. By the sweat of your brow, right? So what happened to Adam? He felt rejected after he fell, number one. Number two, he became self spec That means always fearful of how people would see him. That's why when the moment he saw the lady, <laughs> his bones are my bones, flesh are my flesh. Before then, he was like that. But all of a sudden, he ate the fruit. All of a sudden, whoa, how come you're naked? <laughs> yeah, yeah, how come you're naked? All of a sudden, you're like looking at self. A lot like us, no? Today, out there, people are always looking at self. Can I say this? Before I get deeper into this, can I just tell this? I tell this to you. God loves you and I. I just want to, because you're going to go through with this, with this journey and then you're going to find, oh my goodness. But just get that framework in there first. God loves you and I. That means God chooses you and me. Love is a choice. He chooses you no matter what. He'll choose you. You fell, I still choose you. Amen? So, when I was writing this, I was thinking as a parent, who could ever bear to see their children hurting? No one, right? What more children of God, right? So, but you may ask though, you may ask, and I did ask myself this question, it's like, why God? I asked God, why? Right? Why not remove that tree? If that tree of knowledge and good and evil is so bad, why risk your children falling? Why don't you just get rid of the tree? Just like this, right? Boom, gone, right? Okay, let's get into it. Firstly, firstly, number one, number one. Let's put number one up there. The tree of knowledge was poisonous. That's number one. It kills. Do you know poison kills you, right? Can I tell you, if I have a glass of water, which I don't, I, I have, if I have a glass of water and I put a tiny little drop of cyanide, you know what cyanide is? You know, in spy movies, you see, you know, they always have one cyanide pill by their collar. If they get caught, they just bite that pill and they die right away. Because what it does, it does, it clots your entire body of your blood. Your blood clot immediately. Die. Okay. If I take that one drop of cyanide and put in a drum of water, would you drink that drum of water ever from that water from that drum? No, you wouldn't because it's poisonous. 
So the tree is like that, it's poisonous. There's two fold to this tree. Right? We're explaining about the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There are two fold to this tree. Even though it has good and evil, even though, right? But it is of the same tree. Okay? It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the deepest root of this tree, if you go deep, 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 is condemnation. Now I'm going to explain, okay? That's why it kills. I'm going to explain, okay? If you eat of it, if you eat of it, you would know good and evil, right? Right? Which we all did because we were all in Adam. <laughs> he ate it. So you ate it, okay? You will know good and evil. But if you know good, if you know good and you don't do good, and sometimes we don't do good, right? Okay? You would feel condemned and shame. You feel shame, right? That's why the first thing that Adam and Eve felt was shame. Immediately. Because they said, hey, you're naked. How, how do you know you're naked? But if you know good, if you know good, and you do good, right? You're feeling good about yourself, right? You're feeling good about yourself. And all of a sudden, your friend next to you do something bad. You would rise up and judge that friend and then condemn that friend. Right? Because the deepest root of this tree is the fear of rejection. It's always looking to compare and to deflect. Okay? Because why? Now it's about you. It's about you. I have the ability to judge good and evil. It's about you. So when you eat of this tree, which we all have eaten of, because our forefather Adam ate it, we were all in him, therefore we ate it, you are starting a process called self-centeredness. Are you following? You, you, you're starting this thing about just me, 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 me. However, if you know evil and you don't do evil, you feel condemned and shame. Same way, right? Remember I said initially, if you know good and you don't do good, you feel shame. If you know evil and you do evil, you will feel condemned and shame, right? If you know evil and you don't do evil but find your friend doing evil, you will judge and condemn that friend. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There's two branches. Same tree, same roots. Condemnation and shame. Some of you may say, no, I don't do that. Well, so I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> and then you get along with your friends, you know, you come together in Starbucks or something, and then you say, hey, did you hear? <laughs> Isn't that what people do? Yeah. Huh? Hey, did you hear about that guy, you know? He, on the weekend, I don't know what happened. You know, the Canucks gave me, it was like, you were comparing. Because yourself, right, is following the way of the earth. Mm. You're now looking at yourself, worry about yourself, concerned about yourself, feeling shame for the self. Notice how I have not mentioned God even one time when I'm talking about this tree. Not once. In the context of self-centeredness, God is out of the picture. Out of the picture. You see, Satan didn't tempt Eve with the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil just because she was prohibited. It was a prohibition to eat it. No, he tempted her because the source of his power was rooted in that tree. Condemnation. He wanted that. That was the source of his power. What is the source of his power? 
our own self-destruction. Satan, remember, has no dominion. You, you learned that here, right? Dominion was given to whom? Genesis 1.26, before the fall. Genesis 1.26, 27, given to men and women, correct? What is dominion, right? Dominion means the radar, that means the rulership, the, the, the ability to authorize, to authorize yes, no, yes, no, according to the will of the Father. Okay? He didn't have any authority. He had no dominion. He was an unemployed cherub, by the way. He was fired. You're fired. You know, just like that show. No rank, no office, no authority, and illegal. Why? Because the earth is specially set apart for mankind. The spirit in the human body. That's why authority was given to Adam and Eve. So as long as your spirit, you don't have that. You need the authority vested in that human being. So what better way than to motivate or demotivate that human being into doing what you want to do using their authority that was given to them? Are you following me? So in order to do that, he needed Adam and Eve to eat of that tree so that they feel condemned and shame all the time. Mm. Condemn and shame all the time. Because dominion was given to us. Authority to authorize was given. Are you guys following me so far? If you're lost, just watch this video again. Why do I say that? Proverbs 18.21 NKJV. Let's put that on the board. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You see that? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. <laughs> you love life, you will eat of its fruit. You love death, you will eat of its fruit. And it's in your tongue. Are you the son of the serpent? Or the Son of God. What did Jesus say? My word is spirit and life. Did he say my word is death? No. My word is spirit and life. Operate in the spirit and speak life. Speak life, right? So number two, number two, we're talking about the tree. Here's number two. Number one, you know, is poisonous. Number two, the tree also represents the first law ever given to men by God. God is the king of the kingdom of heaven. The king is the government. Here in Canada, we have some democracy, demo, democratic parliamentary system where, you know, the, 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 the people that are elected come together and make the law, right? But in the kingdom of heaven, you cannot separate the church from the state. Can I tell you that? That's why we're flawed here on earth. You don't separate the church from the state. The church is the governmental agency of the kingdom of heaven. You following? That means the government of heaven is the one that dictates what the law is. Who is the government? God. Okay? Upon his shoulders, Isaiah 9.6. He is the one. So whatever he says becomes law. There's no counsel. By the way, you don't debate with a king. That's why you don't take the word and start going, oh, let's interpret. And uh, yeah, no, you know, today's world is different from yesterday's. No. If God says no, today's is no. If it's yes, it's yes. Please don't try to dilute the word of God. When you do that, you're conforming to the world. You following? Okay, so the tree also represents the first law given by God to man, right? The law, what is the law? Here's the first law. Do not touch or eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Simple as that. There's only one law. L-A-W, singular. There's no laws, just one law. Okay, don't eat of the fruit. Thou shalt not eat of the tree. Law. Let's look at it. Genesis 2, 16, 17. God the Father saying this. He says, 
But the Lord God warned him. How good is your dad? Remember I told you your father is good? He warned him. Even though dominion is given to him, yet he can warn him. Right? He can stop him from now authorizing that, but he can warn you. Isn't it? That's a good parenting way of parenting, by the way. Okay? It's just like, your kids need to experience what they need to experience. You just have to warn them. Like, say, hey, I've done this before and I fell. Maybe it's different for you, but you can go bungee jump. Okay? <laughs> go ahead, bungee jump. But I'm just saying, I've done it before and I kind of sprained my back or whatever, but don't do it, you know? Whatever. But they still have a choice to do it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden. You can eat every fruit in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Wait a minute. You are sure to die. There's no death word there. It's just die. You're sure to die. So now, that is law now. You see, whatever comes out of the mouth of God is law. Can you, can you remember? This is kingdom. So whatever comes out of the word of mouth of God is law. So he said, if you eat of his fruit, you will die. That's law, right? Don't touch it. But Adam broke the first law and only law. Okay. <laughs> only one law, man. Come on. Okay. L-A-W. One law, not laws. Okay. So when he did that, when he did that, he gave sin his power. Sin was there, but there was no power. There was just die. No power in die, but there's power in death. Okay, are you following? So die cannot become death until he broke the law and then it became death. Why? Because inside that tree, inside, I told you it's poisonous, inside that tree were tons and tons of embedded laws. Plural. God gave one law not to touch of that tree, but when he touched it, there were laws that you, you know, when he touched that law, now all of a sudden he knows good and evil. All these laws embedded in that tree causes death to rise from die. For instance, oh, this is evil. Right? Let's just pretend you are Adam. Eat the fruit already. Oh, this is evil. Oh, that's good. Wait, that's good, but this is not evil. Wait, that's not good. <laughs> it is evil. On and on and on. There's tons and tons of law that just came into you. <laughs> From the one piece. Die had no power to become death unless Adam broke the law and he broke the law. He broke the law. Why? Why does he result in death? Because knowing good and evil draws out the tendency for man and woman to want to control and be self-reliant. It draws it out. Right? Now you know good and evil, you want to control things. Well, that's evil. Night market. Oh, don't go. You know? Or this and that and all these laws coming into your mind. But here's the thing, right? When all these things, when you become self-reliant, you're inevitably going to fall because of self-righteousness. The right standing is not with God now. The right standing is, well, I have to determine what is right standing now. Are you following? It's like, oh no, is that right? Is that wrong? You know, like, on whose standard? It's gone. God's standard is gone. It's now like you're walking around thinking, oh, that's good, that's bad. No, that's good, that's bad, that's good. See, knowing good and evil does not mean you will choose to do good and not bad. You see that? Otherwise, there won't be any crime. Listen, everybody, even the criminals, you call criminals, so-called criminals, eat the fruit just like you and I. And how come you're not in jail? He's in jail. There's no guarantee that because you know good and evil, 
you will not do evil. In fact, if you know evil and then it's tempting you, you might want to do evil. Isn't it? Also, when you do choose to do good, is it because you want to gain acceptance for yourself? Ah, there's another problem. So many people in ministry, I'm not knocking anybody, it's like, oh, and then it's like about them. It's not about him. The tree makes you feel insecure. You have to bank on your own knowledge now. If you, you'll be so insecure. Like, am I making the right decision? You know, is this, do I feel right? Is it really right or wrong? Right? If you don't have the word of God, how do you know right and wrong? That's why praise the Lord by His grace, He gave us the Bible. Imagine if there's no Bible. You are relying on good and evil to decide your life. Adios. Okay? You will self-destruct. You know the, the show Mission Impossible? This tape will self-destruct in three seconds. Gone. Right? The tree makes you feel insecure. You become your own slave. People give so much credit to Satan, you know, like, <laughs> oh no, you know, he's possessed. Oh, I've got to be delivered. No, 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 no. You are enslaving yourself. You have the authority to say yes and no. Satan does not have that. But he can influence you because he was the minister of culture in heaven. Go read Ezekiel 28. He knew how to motivate and how to demotivate. That's what culture does. Mm. How did I not see that being evil? Oh man, I did evil again. Oh, Paul wrote about. He wrote in, in uh, Romans chapter 7. Things I do, I don't do. Things I shouldn't do. I, it's Paul the apostle. And he's even showing you how broken he is. Okay. Oh, I'm not done good or not enough good, isn't it? Then people feel that. You, what, you know why you feel like that? Because you ate of the fruit. All these are about your own performance. Your own performance. Self-focus and not God-focus. When you eat of the fruit, it's self-focus and not God-focus. And it eventually lead to self-condemnation, which is destruction. Destruction. When Adam and Eve didn't know good from evil, he relied on God's righteousness, not on self-righteousness. Right? Remember he walked with God in the cool breeze of the night? I'm just imagining God is probably saying, son, you know, never mind, I'll lead you. Don't worry about it. I'll lead you. I'll make the animals. I'll make the trees. You name them. Co-labor. But the moment they ate of the tree, you know, you know, I don't know who drew the, the picture. I think it's Michelangelo, but like God's hand like this, and then Adam's hands like this. Is that Michelangelo? I don't know. Anyways, you see that all the time, right? You're like, it's like, it's broken. It's broken. You know that? It's prophetic. It's supposed to be like this. That means we are interdependent. You have the power, God. You've given me the authority. I'm your child, you're my father. Let's work together, right? Bring a home culture here so that these lost people will also know about it and then return back to you. But the hand is like this, right? Michelangelo, I think it's Michelangelo. Apart. Why? Because when you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, of the tree, you have now selected to be independent. That's why independence is bad. I can say this, I think. <laughs> Every place they want to be independent. No, you're supposed to be interdependent. That's the way God made it. But when you're independent, you're on your own, buddy. 
back. All of a sudden, when he ate of the tree of knowledge, he relied on his own self-righteousness. Self-right standing. Righteousness means right standing. That means, am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? That's tiring. And eventually, you burn out. And eventually, you make so many mistakes, you feel like a failure, isn't it? So many people feel like failures because they are trying on their own and not consulting the source. Abba, Abba, Ale, Bad means source. Today, we reduce him to Abba, Abba, Father, Abba. No, he is the father, he is the lead, but he is the source. We are the resource. We're not the source. So when the resource has to decide everything, eventually you will run out. You buy a Starbucks coffee, you drink it, after a while it's empty. That's why you go back to Starbucks again. But if it's the source from the Father, it's never empty. That's why Jesus says, you don't even know what water I'm going to give to you, man. The woman at the well, you'll never thirst again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, so inside the tree, inside the tree were gazillion laws. That's why God said, no, 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 don't, don't touch on that tree. Yeah. Each one of those laws will give power to sin. Power gets, uh, sin gets its power from the law. That's why it's written like that in the Bible. Right? Are you with me? Okay, so you may ask, or you may say, oh, I don't break laws. I don't break laws. Man, what are you talking about breaking law? You know, I'm not like the criminal. Oh, yeah? I thought of something very, very minute and small, but so amazingly shocking. If the store says on Boxing Day we open at 10 a.m., the sale starts at 10 a.m., you are already there at 8.30, you have broken the law. Huh? How? In, you know, I didn't break any law. Oh, yeah? Why are you there at 8.30 in the morning? Why? So you can get that huh? iPhone 15 or whatever. First, me, self, you already broken the law. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Self is very, very sneaky. Very sneaky, like that snake. Be careful. Amen. <laughs> we're, breaking, we're breaking so many laws. When I was writing this, I think, oh my goodness, I just broke that law. I just broke. We're breaking so many laws, we don't even know we're doing it. The moment is self, you're breaking the law. Because there was only one law to break. Don't touch of the tree. Doesn't matter all these tiny little laws that you break. It came from that tree. That's why I started by saying God loves you and I. <laughs> now you'll be like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, never mind. God loves you. We have become so self-righteous. We're acting like king, judge and jury, isn't it? You work in an office, people act like that. I'm the king, judge, and the jury. I make the decision. Stop. Now it's about self. You're not including people now. You're not loving on people. It's I get ahead. I'm judging you. You didn't do your work well. You're causing this whole department to fall apart. Self-righteous. Self-centeredness does that. And Satan now has power the moment you go into self-centeredness. Because we want to be rooted in the tree of knowledge versus the tree of life. See, we no longer want to root in God. We want to root in our own decision-making. They even have books on that. Your own decision-making. I read all those books, you know, getting into business. Now I look back, it's like crazy, the whole world, like the snake is so clever, the sons of the snake, the serpent, is so good at it. They don't even know that they're doing it. 
They're writing books to influence you. You don't even know. But they want you to conform to the shape of the earth. Mother nature. Mother earth. Now here's the crazy part. Crazy part. Because you're rooted in the tree of life, you say, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. Okay. All right. You're rooted in the tree of life. Okay. Does it mean that you don't break laws anymore? No. In fact, actually, you're breaking even more laws. And that's why I say God loves you. Right? I started by saying that. <laughs> because why? You know, you're, you're, you came from Adam. Right? That's why if people don't understand this, like they feel so dejected as Christians. Like, why am I a Christian and I'm, I'm, breaking, I'm sinning all the time? Sinning is just mis, missing the mark, making mistakes, right? Making mistakes. You know how you make mistakes? When you are totally relying on yourself to make the judgment of good and evil. The best part is when you go to school, like next door, and you're having children's school. But you go, you go to school and it's like there's a test. Right? Every now and again, there's like a test. It's like, oh, quiz. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't even hear of the word quiz until I came here to Canada. We had no quiz. We just test, fail, out. You know, here is a quiz. Why? They give you small, small portions so that you're not out totally. <laughs> I learned that later on. I said, quiz. Oh. And then they always have this, uh, they always have this uh, surprise quiz. I walk in the classroom and you know me, I can't, I told you guys before, I cannot read more than two hours before a test. If I read more than that, I forget everything. But if I read within two hours, I remember everything. So, you know, surprise quiz is a bad thing for me. <laughs> I never do well in a surprise quiz. So I had to re-strategize and only bank on the midterm and the final. I have to score like anything on the midterm and score on the final because all the surprise quiz, I'm dead, I'm out. <laughs> I don't have the two hours to study, neither did I prepare anyway. So, I'm just saying to you that Jesus, who knew the end from the beginning, came and took the punishment for us. We are, even though we are believers, we're still making mistakes. He knew that. You think he didn't know Adam? He knew Adam. He made Adam. That's right. How can that be? Yes, nothing is made, is not made without going through him. Even Adam was made by him. So he knew this guy couldn't fall. I have to come back. No one, no one, by the way, forget about your self-righteousness, only his righteousness. No one on earth could have solved the problem of sin. God knew that, that's why he had to come and die here for himself. <laughs> How do you like that? He came here into the physical body because that's the legitimate being. Remember that? If you die as a spirit, no use. You have to die as the physical man because the physical man is the one that committed the sin. So he came as a physical man, died as a physical man, for himself. Can you just get that self-righteousness out of the way? It's not even about you. Today I was just telling sisters, like people are always saying, you know, uh, what, what did I say? I said, God is before me, who can be against me? You know, like things like that, right? He will never leave nor forsake me. <laughs> no, he will never leave nor forsake his Holy Spirit. He missed his Holy Spirit. Oh yeah. You see? Now you're offended. <laughs> how can you say that? You know, how about me? What about you? You want to live by the tree of life or by the tree of knowledge and good and evil? Which one? You need to choose right now. Even as a believer. Just because you're a believer doesn't mean that the enemy cannot come and just motivate or demotivate you into conforming to the way the world wants to conform you. So many ways, man. You start to look at it. So make a, make a checklist. Okay? 
wake up in the morning, why am I doing this? Is it for God or for myself? Simple question. Why my ministry? Is it for me to get notice or is it for God's glory? Which one? Am I eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or am I eating from the tree of life? Am I the son of the serpent or am I the son of the, the woman? Mm. Which tree are you from? Pam, pam, pam. <laughs> That's why Jesus knew we would eat from the tree of the knowledge. He knew that. Adam was going to eat from that. And that we will be breaking laws, right? So what did he do? What did he say? Matthew 5, 17. He said this, Matthew 5, even though I don't have it up there, never mind. Matthew 5, 17 says, do not, this is Jesus saying, do not think I have come to abolish the law. Oh, L-A-W, singular. Not laws. Where's that law come from? From Eden, there was only one law that became laws. All the other laws was planted in that tree. That's why he said, I've come to abolish the, I'm not, do not think I've come to abolish the law or the prophets, plural. He didn't say law, plural. Law, only one law. I've come, I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Hallelujah. How did he fulfill them? He went to the cross. He went to the cross. Death of anything, by the way, condemnation. I'm going to give you a definition of condemnation. Are you okay so far? You're still good? I'm going to teach you more of it. Condemnation, death of anything is a result of condemnation, by the way. Death. Is condemnation. Remember I told you the tree? The moment you try to self-rely and you are joining a resource and not the source, you feel condemned. You can't do it. It's overwhelming, right? Life is overwhelming. Oh no. I'm, oh. I have a mental breakdown. Of course you have a mental breakdown because you're trying to decide everything on your own. But God, He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. He doesn't have mental breakdown. <laughs> he doesn't go to Gabriel. Gabriel, I'm having a mental breakdown today. Okay? Okay, today, you know, just cut off the oxygen for two hours because I'm going to go to sleep. No, you wake up and the oxygen's working. By the way, don't think that the tree is going to give you oxygen. Come on, man. You guys operate in the spirit. Did you know that the flood for Noah was not from the rain? Hmm... Read your Bible, please. God opened up the ground and water came out and flooded. The rain came just to show you, showcase, to give you the rainbow at the end. Okay? But the water came out and then when, when the 40 days was done, God opened the ground and the water went back into the ground. By the way, today scientists find out there's more water underground than the water above ground. We are so limited. <laughs> And we try to limit God in our, oh, right and wrong. No, stop. He's beyond that. So condemnation, we're talking about condemnation. Death of anything is a result of condemnation. If a building is condemned, it is dead. How's the building condemned? The foundation is cracked. If the food is condemned, it is dead, isn't it? How does the food get condemned? Rotten. Or in the supermarket today with this crazy thing about expiry date, it's called expired. You know, in modern day English, we have forgotten that, but in the old days, expired means you're dead. Right? Expired means finished. Why? Because it's condemned. If the city is condemned, it is dead. If the man is condemned, he is dead. Basically, when something is condemned, its usefulness is done. So why did God put the tree of knowledge there? Why? Is it to trap Adam and Eve in this horrid predicament? Why? No. More surprise, surprise. Here's the answer. In fact, the tree was put there to free them 
Mm. Okay, I'm going to get into it. <laughs> how? <laughs> oh, I can see the how, 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 how. <laughs> you see, for Adam and Eve to have true, genuine, authentic relationship with God, they must be given authority to choose. There's a risk when a real relationship is moving forward. There's a risk. Okay? That's why in real relationship, one day we'll teach about that. When you come together as husband and wife, when you're talking about something, you're not trying to make them agree to you or they agree to you. No. Because when, when two parties come together and this party says, oh, argue, 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 debate, 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 trying to make this person agree. No. If he or she agrees, that means one has won and one has lost. That's not God's plan. God's plan is to understand. That's why He gave us the Bible. The Bible is what? Is what? Remember? No, you got, you got pro promise and prophecy. What's in the middle? Come on now. Principles! The how to and what to do part. The understanding part. That's why lean not on your own understanding, but on his understanding. The understanding, because understanding will transfer information into application. What is application? Wisdom. Thank you. We're all graduates already. Application means wisdom. God's wisdom. So when you get into an argument, please, next time, don't... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win in this argument. Stop. You're acting like the son of the serpent. You're eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Self. What happened to you when you're married, walking down the aisle, oh, for you so-and-so choose this person, for you so-and-so choose, yeah, I love you, I love you. And then three months later, fighting like cats and dogs. Why? Because of the self-righteousness. I need to win. I need to win. She has to agree or he has to agree to me. Sorry, no. That doesn't work in the interdependency dynamics. That means, interdependency means when you come together, you need to just understand. You come, you arguing about something, you say, hey, we don't want to argue. I just want to understand where you're at. Like, I just want to understand. Right? Can I tell you something? If you're married, your norm is not his norm. His norm is not your norm. You're coming together to understand why God put you there in the beginning. Why? Go to God and say, God, we come here, we're broken, but we want to eat from the tree of life. We don't want the tree, the knowledge and good and evil. Trying to figure out on our own. Stop trying to figure out on your own. So that tree was put there to free them, not to cage them. Authority to choose, dominion, a, a choice to choose God's way instead of our own way. However, this relationship that we're talking about with God would not come by eating from the tree. Okay? Just like today, being religious to the law does not mean you have special relationship with the king. Look at the Pharisees. They knew everything from the law. They knew everything. But the one that wrote the law stood in front of them. They couldn't even recognize him. In the end, they rejected him and killed him. It's very different. The Bible, oh, sorry, I'm yelling. It's very different. You know, the old days, you know, in my time, it's probably Uncle John's time too. It's like we write to pen pals, you know? Pen pals. I got a pen pal in Canada. I got a pen pal in Mexico. You write. And then you wait. Three, four weeks later, the letter will come. And then the letter again. Today, it's just email, right? It's very different when you write to your pen pal. But one day, your pen pal shows up at your front door. You open the door. Michael? 
Yes, I'm Michael. You've been writing to me for two years. Really? Boom! You close the door. Because <laughs> you're nervous. You're too nervous. Isn't it? You're too nervous. And then you open the door again. Michael? <laughs> Is that really you? Yeah. Don't laugh. That's what happened when Jesus showed up. Oh, yeah. See, the letter of the law came through Moses. But grace has a name. His name is Jesus. The groom showed up and is still showing up in your life. You open the door. Oh no, it's Jesus. You slam the door. You want to go to the law of Moses? You see? It's okay. I just know the law. I don't need to do it. I don't even need to follow it as long as I know everybody thinks I'm great. Isn't it? More. So many Christians are just preaching like they know everything. No, stop. Where's your heart? Do you know Jesus? Or do you know of Him? One time I met a pastor and he was applying and I'm still looking for a pastor here to help, you know. If you know of somebody, send them my way. But I met him at Starbucks, my favorite place. <laughs> and then he, he's like, he says, I said, do you know the Holy Spirit? Yeah, you know, Father, Son. No, 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 I'm asking you, do you know him personally? And then he was quiet. Not too many people pay attention to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to put chaos into order. God created everything by His, His Word. Let there be light. Right? He made that. But before then, see, God made the heavens and the earth, correct? Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. And then next thing you know, what is that? The Holy Spirit is hovering over water. Water, water signifies chaos. The Holy Spirit is always coming to put order into chaos. That is why Jesus said, hey, stay here, stay here, don't do anything. When I'm gone, when I'm gone, I will send the Holy Spirit. Why? Because there's chaos in your heart. You ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and there's absolute chaos inside of you. So you need the Holy Spirit to come. He will bring order to chaos by revealing you Jesus because Jesus is the embodiment of heaven, the true King of kings, the Son of the living God that will bring order into your life if you trust in Him. Amen? So why... Can I go on still? You, you want to hear more? Or is it too late already? Six o'clock, whatever, 5.30. Okay. Why did God put the tree of the knowledge in the garden? Why? Okay, I told you it's to re liberate them, not to capture them. No. Because there could be no freedom to obey unless there was freedom to disobey. You following? Write that down somewhere. And there could be no true worship unless there was freedom to not worship. There's a risk. There's a risk. True relationship is risky. It's risky. But you need to empower each other. You can't just dominate. Nowhere in the Bible says you have to dominate over people. It says, let men and women have dominion over the birds of the sky, the fish of the ocean, the thing that creeps, crawls, trees. Never in there, in Genesis, it says, let the woman have dominion over the man, or the man have dominion over the woman, or the man have dominion over all the other guys. No, nothing like that. So the moment you try to have dominion over somebody else, you are now acting like the son of the serpent. You're trying to control people. Do you find that in your life? You try to control people? Oh, you're awfully quiet. Maybe striking a note. In a true relationship, 
both parties must relinquish power to control in a true relationship. That is why God did everything. And then he says, okay, well, I'll give you authority. But here's the one tree. You just don't touch the one tree. The one tree, man, that's, just don't touch it. Or else you will surely die because it's poisonous. Don't touch it. Right? So God had to relinquish his power and gave authority to Adam. And Adam only had one tree to relinquish power from. He couldn't do it. He ate. He ate from the tree. Finish. Not finish, finish. But Jesus came to, you know, redeem us, right? But it was bad. You know, what Satan did in the garden <clears throat> was very interesting. He said to the woman and the man, by the way, the man was right behind her. If you read the Bible, it says the man was with her. And all the you know, instruction was given to Adam, never given to Eve, by the way, woman. No instructions were given to you. It was the man. That's why God looked for the man after their fall. You know, give instruction. This guy, this guy didn't even give instruction to the woman. Kind of a joker, is he? Right? Where is he? Where are you, Adam? No, anyways. The serpent managed to convince Adam and Eve to look for dominion when the chapter before, they have already been given dominion. So when you are looking for dominion, now you have grafted in to the snake. You're looking and looking, looking to control, looking to control, looking for dominion, looking to control, looking to control, when you've already been given that. That's why they fell. They committed high treason in the kingdom. God loves you. God loved Adam and Eve. But because they committed high treason, the law says you must die. Anyone that commits high treason in the kingdom, the penalty is death. The king, because he's just, he has to decide. He cannot say, oh, that's my son, I can't kill him. No, law is law. You're dead. Following? Remember I started by saying God loves you? <laughs> Your heart is like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, they were already like God. Satan says, you eat of this fruit, you'll be like God. No, they're already like God because they're children. Your children are like you. Your children is not an ape. Okay? They're like you. Amen? You're not a fish. They're like you. So you you wake up one day after eating the fruit, you go, I want to be like my dad. Why? Because the serpent says, I can be like my dad. What? God is going, what are you? You're not a cow, you know. But I want to be like my dad. That's what Adam and Eve did after eating the fruit. It breaks God's heart when you hear that from his children. You're created in his image and likeness. Ah, sad, right? Sad story. But it's okay. I'm going to jump, 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 jump. There's so much. So interdependency is very important. Okay? When they ate of the fruit, they became independent of God. When you have become independent of the source of everything, you are now relying on your own resource. You're a resource. You're not the source. A resource will come to an end. The source never ends. Amen? Do so remember that, okay? So the order of rulership was broken the moment they ate of the fruit. Power was lost, so kingdom was lost. How is power lost? Because God owns the power. You have the authority, God has the power. For dying is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Amen? So he has the power, you have the authority. That's the interdependency he wanted. John Wesley of the Methodist Church, the founder, he says, man cannot without God, God will not without man. He got it. 
Somehow, years later, I got it. <laughs> so I have to share this with everybody. You, some people feel defeated, you know. It's like, you know, and I can't do anything. God will do everything. No, no. Remember, power of life and, and death is in your tongue. If you keep saying, I cannot, what do you think you cannot in life? You're cursing yourself. God empowered Adam by giving mankind authority to rule. Authority to rule. Man, that's great. Ruling from the throne. How do you rule from a throne? Listen to the last sermon. That means you've got to rule according to His will. You cannot rule according to your will because you cannot have God's authority and then plug into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It doesn't work that way. You following? It doesn't work that way. So power was lost, kingdom was lost. Which king can rule without power? No. Kingdom is gone, right? Everybody is coming in, taking, taking the kingdom gone. Like a long time ago in Israel, right? Everybody came in and then eventually they became slaves, went to Babylon. Hmm. Why? Because they no longer dwell in the presence of God. Eden. Eden is the presence of God. Don't mistake it to think that it's the name of the garden. No. Eden in Hebrew is the presence of God. So independence is bad in the kingdom. You want to look for interdependency, right? Sharing of power. Let me jump. The knowledge derived from the eating of the fruit of the tree of knowledge will drive us to corruption and self-righteousness. That's why it's so poisonous. It's so poisonous. Right? So, <clears throat> before they fell, Adam and Eve have no self-inspection or no self-righteousness. After they fell, they had both of those. Maybe 10 more minutes. Is that okay? This I need to explain to you because this came to me. This crazy part came to me. Not crazy, but it's wonderful. <laughs> it's so wonderful that it blew my mind when I was in Bahamas, sitting down under the tree. He says, from which family tree are we rooted in? The question, right? Remember I started by telling you there's two there's the root of the serpent and the root of the woman. Which root are you plugged into? Right? Are we rooted in the tree of life, Jesus, God's righteousness? Or are we rooted in the tree of knowledge, self-righteousness? Here's an example. You say, okay, Apostle, where is this example coming from? Here's an example. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. You remember Cain and Abel? Right after Adam and Eve ate from the fruit, they had children, right? Mm -hmm. Cain came first and then Abel came. Eve gave birth. And immediately, it's like so prophetic. Cain, here's Cain. Cain, Cain uh, was like a ground tiller, right? He was tilling ground, working, 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 every day, working, working, working. By the sweat of his brow. Remember that? Right? He worked the ground. He followed the ground like the serpent. He did everything by the sweat of his brow. I chose, I did, therefore I am qualified. I, I, I. Self-righteousness. Earth focus, self focus. Now here's Abel. Abel was trusting God with his flock knowing when he sacrificed the best to the Lord, the Lord will give him even more. See, I told you, it's all for God. 
If you're doing God's things, God will give you more for Him, not for you, for Him. If you're walking in His glory, it's because you're giving Him the glory. Are you following? So it is no wonder that Cain's offering was rejected. It was self-righteous instead of God-righteous. I did it myself, my way. <laughs> I did it myself, my way. How many of you know that your way is not God's way? It's not His way. Cain was picking vegetables. <laughs> I like vegetables, by the way. Cain was picking vegetable, and then he's going, ah, no, ah, no, this is for me. Oh, no, this is for me. Oh, yeah, this one is for God. Leftover, small carrots. Give it to him. I used to think like that, but it's not even that. What he was giving, number one, was without blood. Sacrifice would not be accepted by God unless it has blood, because blood, there's life in blood. One day I'll teach about that. Maybe I have a sermon on that before, but you can watch that. But sacrifice is about blood. Without blood, there's no sacrifice. There's nothing, you know, nothing. It's no good to God. Okay? Self-centeredness does that to you. Me first, others later. See? He was so self-centered. He was eating from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil and he was coming from the root of the serpent. Eventually, he killed his brother, by the way. And guess what? The brother's blood spoke to God. I told you there's life in blood. Right? Self-centeredness does that to us. Me first, others later. Including God. God, you can be later. Only when I need you. God! How many of you know you need God every second of your life? When life is going good, you need Him even more. That's right. The moment life is good, turn to God. You better be turning to God. Because something bad is about to happen if you don't turn to God. Turn to God. Turn to God. Bad or good, turn to God. The good and evil, turn to God. Turn to the tree of life. Forget about this other tree. Forget it. Okay? Some of you say, you know, some of us say, oh, I got to take care of my family first. Right? We heard that before. Yeah, I want to go in ministry, but I better take care of my family first, you know. Okay, I ask you a simple question. Who's waking you up in the morning? My alarm clock. No, no, don't joke. Who is waking? You slept through the alarm clock before. Who is waking you up in the morning and providing you oxygen every day? Who? To stay alive so that you can take care of your family. So who comes first? The one that's providing the source of everything. Amen. You're just a resource, so don't put yourself first. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't say, I have to take care of my family. That means you're putting yourself first. Stop. You need a checklist. Checklist. No self. No self. Amen. So, throughout the Bible, you can see the spirit of Cain and spirit of Abel manifesting. God's prophecy was 100% right. Came through. You can see it. Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel. The first two was to show us what was going to happen all the way down to Revelation 21. Yes, you heard me. All the way down to Revelation 21. That means, well, but the cross, no, after the cross, I tell you, you still sin. Because you ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. But God is so good that His blood is washing you. His grace super abound. Every time you make a mistake, right? But until Revelation 21, when the new Jerusalem comes, then it's game over for Satan. Finish. Right? So those with the spirit of Cain that will choose self-centeredness and those with the spirit of Abel will choose to trust in God. 
That's the two roots we're talking about. How can you say that? Show me some example from the Bible. King Saul chose himself, came to his own end, died. Right? I tell you, death comes from condemnation. How about King Adonijah? He wanted to usurp the power from Solomon. What happened to him? He died. King Hosea confronted Elijah. What happened to him? King Herod Antipas. What happened to him? Judas Iscariot. Ananias and Sapphira. And so on. So you can see Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel all the way. So, ending, trust me. How should we position ourselves? That's the question, right? What's the solution here? Also, what, how, how do we position ourselves? If all these things are happening and all this attack is coming from everywhere, the attack is within you. You're trying to graft yourself into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to choose what is good and evil. Stop with that, okay? You need to trust him and trust his word. What is evil in his word is evil. Jesus said yes is yes, no is no. You cannot just decide to change his words. And today we see that in so many gatherings. Oh, it's okay. Today's society is different. No. But you don't understand our situation. No. You're not that special. Everything that is happening now already happened in the Bible. And if it was not, it was already happened in heaven. Hmm. So how do we position ourselves? Okay. We go to Jesus, the embodiment of the kingdom of heaven. The king himself came and taught us this. John 6, 63 and 65, NLT. He said, my words are spirit and life. The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. Did you hear that? Your own performance profits you nothing. The very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, he said. Then, he said, that is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. Let's go further. Jesus also said this. Jesus said this in John 4, 23, 24, NLT. When he met the woman at the well and they said, oh, you know, we worship here and you Jews worship here. Where do you think we should worship? And Jesus said this to her, by the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way for God is spirit. So those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Can I ask you a question? Is spirit the way of the world? No. In spirit and in truth. You remember Nicodemus? He came to Jesus. You know, one night he was hiding. He came at night because he didn't want to. He was like the top guy. And he didn't want to be seen, you know. He came at night. And then he asked Jesus, hmm, how do I enter the kingdom of heaven? He didn't even say that. He said, you know, we, we realize you are, uh, you are like, uh, you know, you are a man of God because all these, you know, miracles and everything you're doing, all these miracles. And Jesus says, unless you do this, you cannot see the kingdom because he's talking about seeing. He's trying to see in the physical. He's trying to graft into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and then see the tree of life. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So Jesus replied, 
I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Again, spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to the spiritual lives. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it's coming from and where it's going. So you can explain how people are born of the Spirit. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus was asking for an immigrant. He, was, he had an immigration question. Immigration question, you know? How do I enter the kingdom of heaven? <laughs> Any immigration, you need to satisfy certain criteria, right? The kingdom of heaven is no different. You need to be born of water and spirit. Born again by the spirit. Amen. So, Did Jesus say anywhere that you need to be anywhere about flesh or earth or knowing good or evil? No. Just by the Spirit. Just by the Spirit. God is Spirit. The spiritual realm is more real than the physical realm because the spiritual realm made the physical realm. God made us. Right? So we need to operate by the Spirit. Can I tell you that? You need to operate by the Spirit. So two ways to kill the self-centeredness. Here's the answer to all the questions you had in your mind all, all afternoon. Two ways to kill that children of the serpent idea trying to graft into that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Here's two ways. Number one, let's put it up on the board. We need to start operating in the Spirit. I'm glad brother was speaking in tongues earlier. See in the Spirit, hear by the Holy Spirit. You need to come in here, hear by the Holy Spirit. Don't hear by your physical ears. Surrender to the Lord in spirit, knowing that the flesh profits nothing. Jesus says the flesh profits nothing. So stop operating under the flesh. Kill the flesh off. Pray in the Spirit. I told you, I give you a clue. You pray in the Spirit tonight before you sleep. You have dreams coming from God. You have night vision coming from God on what, whatever projects you have, whatever products you're developing, whatever. God will give you the idea immediately when you speak in tongues. If you don't have tongues, today come and ask for prayer and get tongues. Number two, discern the cross. Discern the cross. It's a killer for self-righteousness when you discern the cross properly. It's a stake to the heart of self-righteousness. Finish. Jesus is the only sinless man killed by the very people that he came to save and he forgave them. He died for us and as us. Amen? So I think that's it. And um, I just want to end with this. Just remember the flesh profits nothing. Okay, just remember that. And remember the cross, the great forgiveness. Put Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 up there. Ephesians 8, 2, 8 to 9. This is the last, I promise. For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith. This is not from yourselves. Remember? It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. What Paul was saying here is, get grafted into the tree of life. Stop grafting yourself in the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Because when you graft into the tree of knowledge and good and evil, it's always about performance, works and merits. You can't get into the kingdom through merits, performance, or works. It is only by His grace. So I'll end there and remember sola gracia, sola fida. Latin, by grace alone, through faith alone. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Hallelujah.